Let's take a look at an interesting and useful standard library function that shows up a lot in ROS code. The function is stdbind. Say we've got a function called add. It takes two ints and returns their sum. Now we want another function called add5 that takes one int and always adds five to it. This is the same function as add, we've just hard-coded one of the arguments. So we can write add5 using add. So we can write add5 using add. Add5 has wrapped the add function. We can do the same thing with bind. We'll start by including the functional header from the standard library as it declares the bind function. Bind takes in a function and values for all of that function's parameters. It then returns a function object that wraps the function we gave it. So if we call bind with add, three, and four, we get back a function that takes no arguments and always returns seven. Cool, but how do we tell bind not to hard code all of the values? To replicate add five, we need a function that takes a parameter. This is where placeholders come in. Placeholders are special constants we can give to bind to tell it to add a parameter to the wrapper function and forward that parameter to our inner function. We can replicate our add5 function by setting our first bound parameter to 5 and the second to std placeholders underscore 1. Now we can call our wrapper function with one argument and we get that back plus 5. The placeholder constants are numbered to control the count and position of parameters in our wrapper function. Placeholder 1 will be the first parameter in the wrapper function, placeholder 2 the second, and so on. This lets us duplicate and rearrange the way our wrapper parameters are forwarded to the inner function however we like. For example, if I replace our 5 with placeholder 1, the function we get back takes one parameter and returns it added to itself. So that's how bind works, but that's not quite how we end up using it most frequently in ROS code. We've talked about the fact that when we call a member function, it's called on a specific object. Anytime we call a member function of a class, it needs a specific instance to run that function against. When a library asks us for a function to serve as a callback, we can't just give it f because it doesn't know what instance it should call f on. And that's where bind comes back to help us. One of the special things bind can do is bundle a member function with an object to call it on. The wrapper function we get back can be called like a standalone function as if it's not tied to a specific object. We call bind with the member function, then the object, then any parameter values or placeholders. The ampersands are here because we need to give bind pointers to the function and object. We'll explain pointers soon, just think about this as part of the syntax for now. So now we've got a standalone function object called bound func that we can call with one argument and it calls f on our specific instance of a and forwards the return value back up to us. This use case of binding member functions to specific objects is how we'll use bind most often in ROS code. It lets us give member functions to ROS to be used as callbacks. That's it for this video. This isn't everything there is to know about bind, but we've covered it enough for our use cases.